Glory to God, glory to God. He is worthy of the praise. He is worthy of the thanksgiving. He is worthy of all the honor. Amen. Glory to God. God bless your family. It is a privilege to come to you again to share the word and the love of God. Amen. Glory to his name. Glory, glory, glory. A zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. That is our scripture we've been dealing with on this series. Paul is dealing with his Jewish brother. And I want to go to the foundation for just a moment so we can read this scripture again, so we can get an uh, understanding where we're coming from. Paul says, For I bear them witness, listen to this, that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness mm, and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. In this segment, I want to deal with the righteousness of the law, the righteousness that comes from the law, and the righteousness of faith. Because in the body of Christ, there's been a, a mixture of this being mixed together, the righteousness that is of the law and the righteousness that is of faith. And what side of the fence are we standing on? What dispensation are we standing on? Where is the gospel in this? Because this salvation <laughs> is the power of God. It's the power of God. Paul speaks of a, of a gospel, of a salvation that is of the power of God that comes through Christ Jesus. And so I want to go back here to Romans uh, chapter 9. And uh, it's very interesting here in this place because as ministers, as we have said earlier, as ministers, it is our duty to lead the body of Christ through this righteousness of faith, that we have a, a footing, that we have a standing, and we're standing solid and assured and confidence and uh, uh, what God has done through Christ, that we not be tossed to and fro about who we are in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have no righteousness of our own, but we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And why is that so? I am so glad you asked. Go with me to Romans chapter 9. I want to start with uh, verse number 30. Let's start with verse number 30 here. He said, what should we say then? This is as if the Jews were asking Paul a question. Now, Paul is answering his own question, what he has been teaching out in the field as evangelists. So he says, uh, what should we say then? That... That, gen that, that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness, Gentile is one who's what? Who is not a Jew. That's what a Gentile is. A person who is not Jewish. Amen. That's us. Okay? We were Gentiles. <laughs> Listen. So he says, he says, who did not pursue righteousness have obtained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. They have obtained a righteousness that they were not even pursuing. Even the righteousness of faith? Because in our other settings, we understand the righteousness of faith. When you're talking about the righteousness of faith, you're talking about a righteousness of, that is of faith. You're talking about what has come from Abraham. Abraham was credited a righteousness according to his faith. But the Jews believed they had this righteousness according to the law. And so... He, Paul is telling them, no, listen, listen, listen. The children of Abraham are the children of faith. They are the children of the righteousness of faith who have the faith of Abraham. They are the true children of promise. So the Jews is like, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. What are you saying? You said that they received a righteousness that they didn't even pursue? The righteousness of faith? What are you talking about? Wait a minute. And so let's continue. He says, attain to a righteousness, even the righteousness of faith, verse 31. But Israel pursue the law, pursuing the law of righteousness, has not obtained to the law of righteousness. This is where we talk about a righteousness of the law and a righteousness that is of faith. The righteousness that is of a law is the work that they perform. This is under Moses. They perform the laws, the ceremonial things that were under the law, that pertained to the law. And they did not obtain the righteousness of the law is because sin was always present. 
Sin was not taken away out of the picture. That's why they could not obtain the righteousness. But they believed they were righteous because of what they were practicing, what they were doing. And Abraham was their father. So in what they are doing, they are saying they are, they are the righteous one. No. Uh, the descendants of Abraham, he says, uh, they're not the true children of faith. They're not of the faith. Of the faith has come through the promise. Has come through Isaac. But, but listen, listen, listen. So when we're trying to keep the law to be justified in the sight of God, or trying to be accepted in the sight of God. See, that's when Jesus says in a place that, uh, that he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. We're trying to keep the law to be accepted. It's not what Jesus didn't do that he fulfilled the law. It's what he did do that the law was fulfilled. Because the prophets and the law spoke of him. They testified about his coming. They testified about who he was. The prophets and the law testified about Jesus. And Jesus fulfilled everything they spoke of about him. He fulfilled it. According to the law, he fulfilled it. Everything. And so in doing so, he dealt with man's sin. He has dealt with man's sin. But there in this, this, this self-righteousness of what we do makes us right with God. It's something that happens today in, our, in the body of Christ, so to speak. It's what happens today. Because we're not hearing the true message or understanding the gospel in its pure form of righteousness. The gospel is, 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 is where we, we are receiving a righteousness, a justification that is from God. Because we're receiving the same blessing that Abraham received. Abraham was credited a righteousness. You heard us talk about this here before. Abraham was credited a righteousness. We were made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is the right standing that Abraham was standing in, but now we're standing in it as, well, as the children of Abraham because of the faith that we have responded to. We have responded to the faith that justifies us. Like it says in the scripture, David says, he says, uh, the God who justifies the ungodly. Wow, the God who justifies the ungodly. That was me. That was you. He has justified us through the working of his own power through Christ. So the working of the law, the righteousness of the law comes through you crossing every T and dying every I. You, you have to be righteous to, to fulfill the law. Let, let, us, let me put us in mind of something. The law was not given because they were righteous. Let us be reminded, the law was not given to the Jews because they were righteous. It was given because they were unrighteous. That's why it was given. We believe as Gentiles, we receive the faith of Jesus because he has dealt with our unrighteousness at the cross. The ways of sin being death. He was our substitute lamb, so he dealt with that. So we believe that by faith. So you have a, a law of righteousness that can never be obtained to be justified in the sight of God because of sin. But because of grace, sin has been removed. And God, with his mercy and grace, have received us unto his bosom through Christ. That we have obtained a righteousness, a justification that God has no more account of sins against us. Glory to God. Can't you see this? So it's necessary on this journey that I understand as a believer that I've been made right with God all the days of my life. And I was crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, raised with Christ, that I can live for God. So I'm not living for God unrighteous, in unrighteousness. I'm not living for God in the fear of the law. The law is holy and the law is good. The law is righteous. But I, we were what? Unrighteous. But through the, the, the sacrifice, through the Lamb of God, 
he has made us right with himself. So, ministers, this is the righteousness of the gospel that we have to bring across so that sin won't have a hold of our conscience towards God. Now, I know there is a, a, a place to where that uh, 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 sin lies in the flesh. I know there's a place to where that we say that we miss it. I know the place that we say we need to get it right. But understand this, your foundation is what God did. He made you right with himself. He got it right for us that we can come stand in this position in the face of him knowing that we've been made in the image and the likeness of his son, made alive right before him. That by his spirit, we can deal with this body of flesh. We can yield ourselves to the spirit and not be led by the sin of this flesh. Not be caught in its grips or slave to it again. We've been made alive to live unto God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we're not led by the law of a condemnation hoping to be right with God. But we led by the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus, knowing that we're right with God. So with that being said and understanding God's grace is upon us, that we be a witness of this truth, of this love, of this unconditional love that we have been engrafted in. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to stop by for a short time, a short moment here to plug this in. And we will pick this up again. Mm, a zeal for God. But not according to knowledge. The knowledge of righteousness. We have come to understand that it is the righteousness of faith that is in Christ Jesus that we stand in the face of our holy God. Amen. God bless you, and we'll pick this up again. Amen.